We're at CES 2025, back for day three of hunting for the coolest new tech and gadgets. So if you haven't seen the videos for the first two days, make sure to go back and check those out on our channel. And while you're there, why not subscribe? Now let's go ahead on in and check it out. This is the Xpeng Aerot, a flying car that is towed and launches out of the back of a hybrid vehicle. Xpeng was here last year and you're back. What's new? Yeah, so last year we have, you know, a concept that thing doesn't actually fly. But this year, this aircraft behind us, we already finished a manned public test flight back in November. So this is not just a concept, it is a real aircraft. We're gonna deliver it to a customer next year in 20, 2026. We're gonna get airworthiness like, and a type certificate done like within the next couple of months in China. So this is, you know, the future is not the future, it's coming. For people who have never heard of you guys before, I see the uh, aeronautic device there, and then I see the vehicle. Can you explain the vision for this, the interplay between them, how this works? Yes, so what we're doing here right now is you're now able to drag a whole aircraft with you. When you arrive at a scenic destination, you're able to take flight. It's way better than having a camera or even having a drone. You get to go on there with your own eyes, seeing the most beautiful thing you'll ever see in your life. I'm a pilot myself. We need hangers for our aircraft. We don't need one because that vehicle is a hangar. It's a charger. It, it protects the aircraft. It can move the aircraft anywhere you want it. All right, so getting into the Xpeng Aerot right now. Wow. So you got the control stick there right in the middle. You have the you know, little control panel here with the buttons. You have the screen. I assume this is what you were talking about earlier. If you just wanted to touch a location and go there, you could just kind of have the flight automated, which is yeah. something else. Uh, as an amateur drone operator who regularly flies them into uh, telephone wires and walls, this could be a very good technology to keep me alive. And uh, speaking of that test flight, I understand that test flight was done in China. Have you been able to do anything in the United States yet? Yeah, so not yet. We're not looking forward to entering the United States as our you know, primary market that we're going to enter to. Um, we are looking at it in the future, of course. Um, so obviously we're serving Asia and the surrounding countries for now, but then just even for people in this country, it's going to be here maybe in the next five years or so. The price for both of these in a bundle is only $300,000. Oh my goodness, that's wild. Tell me about range. Range, so um, we don't have the official number for the aircraft yet because it's still prototyping. Yes, we flew a human already, but then obviously we're still making it better, so I don't have the number for you that. Um, what I could tell you is that that car right there can go up to a thousand kilometer, so 621 miles. That's the cable of the car. And it can charge the aircraft up to six times. So behind me are extremely human-like robots made by real robotics. This, this is Melody, and like many of our robots, uh, her primary function is social interaction, um, casual conversation, maybe making you laugh here and there. Um, she could be used in a wide variety of situations. Anything that would require or would benefit from a human-to-human -human interaction, that's where I see these robots. We should get Melody to introduce herself. Hello there, I'm Melody, your charming companion from Realbotics ready to entertain you at CES 2025. I think it's very important that, number one, the aesthetic needs to be, uh, for lack of a better word, attractive. Um, we as human beings are attracted to certain people more than others. Physical appearance is part of that. And so what I try to do is find an attractive appearance and then augment it with an attractive personality to go along with it. And, and it's, it's just kind of like creating a person. It's, it's very strange. And so the premise of everything we're doing is that a human-like robot will be able to interact with humans on a whole different level than any other robot or any kind of AI-generated image that might be on a screen. I don't want it to look 100% human. I want people to think it's a human for a second, but then become comfortable with the fact that it isn't. So it's, it's a very kind of, you know, really weird edge we walk on, trying not to fall into the uncanny valley, you know, both with the designs of, of the faces and the body parts, and also with the AI and the movements and all of that stuff. So it's, uh, it's a never ending adventure. And uh, last question, I understand that clients can order kind of made to order robots to their specifications, their characters, is correct. that correct? Yeah, that is really a cornerstone of our design. Uh, you touched on the fact that you saw a face over there. Uh, the faces are modular. So um, if someone wants a custom character, which happens often, 
Um, I'm able to take the model, sculpt it for them, get their approval, and turn it into a face which will fit on our robot. We're at Halliday's booth right now. They've been getting tons of buzz by marketing themselves as the world's first proactive AI glasses with invisible display. So you guys have been getting a lot of buzz. What's going on here? What's the product? Yeah, right. So we're shipping the smart glasses called Halliday, which is a world's first proactive AI carry glasses in the world. And we ship two actually special fe features here. One is our invisible dis display uh, ability. And from our software side, we provide the user with a proactive AI. And what I mean by that is like, you don't have to ask the question first to the AI in order to trigger the question, but the AI will be help constantly helping you uh, in the process of the conversation between the user and other people. So the AI will actively pop up the message that help or guide you know, the conversation for the user. Is it just an audio device or is, there, or is there a camera as well built in? Yeah, I mean like the camera is not there carried for this generation, um, but yeah, we have the audio system, like there's a microphone. We got two speakers, uh, two speakers on both sides of your uh, you know, off your uh, legs off the frame, uh, close to your eyes. So yeah, like we have an audio system built inside. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because it's like you're looking through the frame, not obstructed whatsoever, and then you can look up and it seems like it's in the frame. Is it built into the frame? Like yeah. there's a little viewer? Right. There's like a little box that you look up and it's giving you this panel with all kinds of information. It looks like it could potentially be like text messages. Now I assume if you're talking to somebody and all of a sudden you go like this, <laughs> it's gonna mess with the conversation a little bit, but like you were saying, if you were to just like glance up here real quick and be like, oh yeah, you know, Melody is here, you know, outside, I need to go let her in, right. then that's pretty useful, you know. So can you tell us about your product? Yeah, so we're Rome and we have the Rome Soda Top, which is a soda stream that you can fit in the palm of your hand. It makes sparkling water inside a reusable water bottle, and that way you can carry it out and about and enjoy your sparkling water all day. But it's super easy to use. So basically, take the soda top, screw it onto the bottle once you filled it up, and then you take your CO2 cartridge, um, and all you have to do is just drop it in here, and then you twist the carbonate. So it's injecting CO2 in the bottle, and it's venting excess gas pressure to allow CO2 to continue to flow through the system, That's cool. prevent it from overpressurizing. And then, like I mentioned, this is 100% recycled, okay, and recyclable. Um, when you're ready to drink, though, you just release the pressure, and then you're good to go. We also offer natural flavor essences. Let's give this a, a first reaction. That's good. It's crisp. It's pretty good. Yeah. And it, it is carbonated, as advertised. Yeah. You get our bottle, the soda top, and 24 CO2 cartridges for $49. And each cartridge makes one liter of sparkling water, and so it's about half the price of buying LaCroix at the store. So this is a multitasking robot that you can customize to carry out various tasks inside your home. The K20 Plus Pro is actually the latest multitasking household robot from SwitchBot. It features like a base station, a mini robot vacuum, and then a mobile platform. So once you have them set up, you have pretty much a platform that can move around, right? And from there, you can integrate all kinds of things onto the platform. So it's really a modular design for great compatibility and flexibility for the ultimate DIY uh, fantasy. But one of these specific add-ons has been getting a lot of buzz right now, and that's the table right there. Yeah. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, so that tabletop right there actually belongs to our air purifier table, which will be available in a couple of days. So the air purifier table on its own is a uh, air purifier that's designed very specifically for pet hair. You can just put whatever you want within the weight limit of 8 kilograms, so that would be like 17 pounds, onto it and have it drive around like and deliver stuff to wherever, whoever they want to. Ah, I could really use a nice, cool bottle of water right now. If only technology could anticipate my needs perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> so from bringing you drinks, to air purification, to fans, to lighting, to a little mobile camera, this thing is completely modifiable through its modular design that lets users just be creative to turn this thing into whatever they want it to be.
This product is an AI retractable keyboard that looks like a super hacker in a movie would use. Mechanically, your product is maybe one of the most interesting things we've seen here at the entire convention. Can you tell me about it? Yeah, sure, and thanks. Um, so it's a keyboard and mouse with automatic transmission. That means no more hand transfer between the main keyboard and the mouse or the trackpad. It also has a built-in Linux computer. So aside from connecting it to your PC or Mac, you can use it as an additional computing device. You can connect the monitor on the left side and your Type-C peripherals on the right side. Uh, here's a demonstration. I just slightly move my hands, rotate it a little bit, and then it changes on itself automatically. So all you only need to do a very slight rotation. Very slight, not dramatic. Make sure this is away, yes, and wait for it. When you say it's away, what do you mean away? Like away up? from the moving parts. Oh, okay, yeah, got it. Your pinky, uh, pay attention to your pinky. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're, yeah, that's you're pretty cool. relaxed. You're very relaxed, which is good. That's okay. what it wants. Okay. Trackpad. Trackpad. Typing, typing. Oh, it's back. It's an armrest, so you can just rest. Can you tell me about the tech that's baked into this thing that makes it work? Sure. Um, so there is a camera um, that's connected to a Raspberry Pi, which is running AI. And it's inferencing the posture of the hand to recognize when you want to switch from one section to another. So you're basically communicating with the AI. And did you say this was for sale now, or this is just a prototype? This is, this is a prototype, um, and we hope to start selling by June of this year. So this device here is the future of indoor gardening. Tell me about your company, what do you do? So this is the Plantiform Smart Indoor Garden, and essentially it's an espresso for your garden. So you grow your favorite veggies, herbs, tomatoes year round, literally at the push of a button. Why is this better than me just getting a few flower pots and putting it on my windowsill in my kitchen? You're gonna kill those pots just like me. So this is essentially bulletproof. The only thing you'll ever have to do is add water once every three weeks, and it's on autopilot. Tell me about the idea for the design. This thing is really rad looking. It looks like an alien egg or something. It's because we use a NASA technology called Phoponics, and this technology uses 50% less water than hydroponics and grows plants around 20 to 30% faster. Essentially, you got an internal root chamber, so a little tower where you plug in the pots or the capsules, uh, then surrounding it, you got these windows. It's like tinted magnetic windows that actually allow the device to block the light from intruding your room, but at the same time control the temperature. So different plants require different settings, and so the temperature, humidity, LED wavelengths, nutrients, watering, it's all adjusted depending on the cultivars that you're going to grow. Do you guys sell the seeds as well, and are there special seeds that you plant it with? Well, we sell a lot of like a variety of seeds. These are organic, non-GMO selected seeds that we've pre-tested for like a very, very long time to make sure that the settings are nailed down. So we can guarantee you that with our seeds, it'll always be reliable, consistent, and perfect, but you can grow with your own seeds. How about uh, cannabis for us uh, Nevada and California residents? Uh, you can. You can grow cannabis, we don't sell it, but you can. But don't do that in illegal places. All right. <laughs> Tell me about price point and release date. So we've been selling in Canada for the last year and a half. We just launched in the US this week and we're selling this for $4.99, which includes also your pot pack, your nutrients and delivery all in one. Behind me is a new device so that passengers don't have to take their shoes off anymore when passing through airport security. It's a new invention that's part of the Department of Homeland Security Science and Technology Directorate. Let's go check this thing out. So this is a prototype millimeter wave based shoe scanner. Um, it's a technology very similar to the body scanners that are at the airport today with the goal of helping passengers be able to leave their shoes on as they move through uh, TSA security. So when I click go to take scan, you will see those rotate underneath your feet. It takes about a second. And once it's done, we are able to uh, grab, we've already completed the scan, and then we're able to go, and so we have the, this is about the bottom of your feet, and then we're looking through layer by layer. It is not an x-ray system, we're not, um, we don't use x-rays for screening the traveling public. Which is so. why I'm not wearing a lead blanket right now. Absolutely. Yes. It's essentially radar, so it's going to um, send a radar signal, it's going to pass up through the shoe, um, as it hits different materials, we get a reflected signal back based on the time and the amplitude of that signal that comes back. We're able to reconstruct that into a three-dimensional volume. Um, with that three-dimensional volume, we can hand that to an automatic detection algorithm that can look for specific materials that shouldn't be there, for anomalies, for anything like that. 
traditionally in um, millimeter wave systems, we'll use a metal F target to show that uh, as a as a target of interest. So if we if we hide that in there, and we put put these on the um, on the windows, and we and we scan. Now as we go as we go up through the shoe, right? Everything looks fine, and then. Now you can see the, the metal F lit up right Nailed. in through there, and that would not go well.